You Booked It, episode 93. Hey, entertainers and performers of the world. I'm your host, Dane Reese, and welcome to You Booked It, where I chat with inspiring entertainment professionals seven days a week. By digging into their journey, we're going to discover everything you need to do to have a successful entertainment career. You know, because training usually skips that part about how to actually make your skills work for you in the real world. Fellow entertainers, my drive here at You Booked It is to share the inspiring and incredible journeys of successful entertainment professionals. We're here to support your journey. So go to YouBookedItPodcast.com and join the You Booked It email community, where we dig deep into truly actionable things you can be doing right now to book that next audition, submission, or gig. If you enjoy this free podcast, please show your support and search for You Booked It on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app, where you can subscribe so you don't miss an episode, leave a rating, and review. And now. Let's do this. All right, let's get started. I am excited to introduce my guest today, Jenna Wallacek. Are you ready for this, Jenna? Hey, I am ready. All right. Jenna is a professional dancer, Pilates instructor, and most recently, new business owner. She has started an entertainment and production company, and while it's still in the early stages, she is excited for the future. The right creative will supply talent to shows, events, parties, TV, film, whatever entertainment needs you have, we can supply the right creative. Jenna recently moved back to Adelaide, Australia after seven years of living, working, and performing in L.A., Jenna, that is a quick intro of who you are and what you've done, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Fill in the gaps, who you are, and a little bit more about what you do as a professional in the entertainment industry. Okay. I'm an artist originally from Adelaide, South Australia, but I've been living in LA for the last seven years and I just moved home uh, when COVID hit and things started to get weird in LA. I thought it was best to get out and head home. So yeah, I'm a pro dancer. I work in fitness. I've been working in fitness alongside my dancing since I was about 19 years old. So a little while now, and I've just started my own production company. So That was something I started working on late last year. And now that I've moved back to Adelaide, it's all systems go. So yeah, that's really exciting. In my career as a professional dancer, I have done so many different jobs, which I feel uh, so blessed and so grateful for. I've managed to travel all over the US and do a bit of traveling here in Australia as well. But yeah, it's been a really fun ride and a really mixed bag of different experiences and opportunities. Yeah, brilliant. And let's move on to this section here. And Jenna, look, I am a sucker for a good quote. What is your favorite (laughs) quote you'd like to share with everyone? Okay, so this is actually something I had up on my wall while I was going through dance college. So I got my Bachelor of Dance Performance almost straight out of high school at Adelaide Centre for the Arts here in Adelaide. And it's a quote that says, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? And I used to open my eyes to that quote every morning and I found it really motivating. And I've reflected back on that so many times during my career uh, in moments when I've been auditioning or felt nervous about something, I've just kind of thought to myself, if I knew that I couldn't fail right now, what kind of like gusto would I put into this or what kind of confidence would I have? I I would say that's one of my favorite quotes and it's really helped me along the years for sure. Yeah, I love that quote. And it applies to everything that we do, because just about every job, every gig that we have, we are just putting ourselves out there into the universe, into, you know, the hands of others and say, all right, this is me. That's what it is. We just got to take the leap day after day. Yeah, you've really got to get comfortable 
being uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> and it is that fear of like rejection and failure, especially in auditions where you're putting yourself on the line and, you know, sometimes you're in a panel in front of a panel full of people or dancing in front of other dancers. And yeah, it can be really daunting. So having that mindset, you know what, I can't fail here. I'm just going to go for it. It does allow you, I think, to push those boundaries, whether you're in an audition or in class or just career-wise in general, just trying to eliminate that fear factor. Yeah, absolutely. And let's move on to this next section. And Jenna, of course, you are an entertainer. I am an entertainer. And I think that you'd agree this industry can be one of the most subjective, brutally honest, personally emotional industries either of us have probably ever experienced. And you know as well as I that in order to create and have a successful career in this industry like you're having now takes a lot of dedication and hard work. And while, yeah, there is an outrageous amount of fun and excitement doing what we do, there are also our fair share of obstacles, challenges, and failures we are going to experience and we're going to have to move forward through. So tell us, what is one key challenge, obstacle, or failure you've experienced in your career And how did you come out the other side better because of it? Wow. I think there's been, (laughs) looking back, there's lots of obstacles that I've overcome on different levels. And I think starting off on maybe like a smaller scale, there's issues constantly with body image and being the right look and the right fit for a job and trying to sort of mold yourself to fit whatever job you're going for. I think that's been a constant obstacle no matter, you know, what job you're doing or as jobs come up, trying Mm. to fit yourself in. But the first thing that popped into my mind for a key challenge. And this is something I went through recently. So I've got my O-1 visa to um, live and work in the United States. And that was a real challenge going for that visa in the first place. So when I first did this process, this was like eight years ago now. And then after three years, I needed to renew my visa to continue working in the States. And then three years later, again, for the third time, I needed to renew the visa. So by the time I was doing it for the third time, I thought, you know what, I've got this. I've done this before. This is going to be smooth sailing. And boy, was I wrong. I went through a six month battle trying to renew my visa. So this happened in 2019. And it was a really difficult time because I'd left work and bookings and a life in LA to come back to Australia for what I thought was going to be a three-week renewal period. And then it turned into six months. Oh, wow. um, That was a big challenge for me that, that kind of happened quite recently. But I kept fighting and pushing and yeah, I just had to stand in the storm for a little bit there and I eventually got through it. But it, uh, it did make me realise just how determined I can be in getting things done and achieving things. And also, I think humbled me because I'd been through the process a couple of times before of visa renewals and I know a lot of artists go through this when they do want to work overseas and try living in different countries to better their career. It did humble me in going, okay, (laughs) you know, that wasn't going to be as easy as I thought, but it did make me realize how much I wanted to be in the States and continue on that path that I had been on. And yeah, it was a real fight, but I managed to come out the other side and then ended up going back to the States with my brand new visa. So, yeah. Yeah, those visa obstacles are no joke. I have so many friends that are, they happen to be a lot of Australian friends or UK friends that have to do the exact same thing again and again. And you're right, that application process is brutal. But oh, yeah. (laughs) I mean, the binders that have to be created that you have to submit is crazy. But Yes. You know, if you want it, and it's so good that you said that you discovered this has solidified. Yeah, I do want this. I want to be in the States. This is where I've built so much of a career and I got to go for it. I love that. Yeah, definitely. Wonderful. Well, let's move on to a time that I like to call your spotlight moment. 
that one moment Ooh. in time you realized, yes, I am going to be an entertainer for a living, or maybe it was, yes, this is what I need to be doing as an entertainer. Tell us about that. So I had always danced as a kid. And I remember I was getting a little bit more serious, like going through my teenage years. And then when I was 17 years old, I went and saw Christina Aguilera in concert at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre. And I remember being in like the nosebleed section, like way up so far from the stage. But I was just glued to her dances the whole show. I don't even know if I watched Christina Aguilera. (laughs) I was just so fixated on the dances. And I remember that moment of sitting in my seat and watching the show and just being in awe of them and thinking to myself, and I was only 17 at the time, but I remember thinking, I need to be doing what they're doing. I want to be performing like that. I want to, I've got to live where they live. (laughs) I've got to be surrounded by what they're surrounded with. I've got to put myself in that world. And yeah, I have never forgotten that moment where I was just sitting there thinking, yeah, this is what I need to be doing. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love yeah. that you went there and you were like, I don't even know if I watched Christina. <laughs> That's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah, I was just, yeah, so in awe of the dancers. And it's just that energy and that feeling that you get. And I remember that having that feeling inside, like, yes, this is what I need to do. Yeah, absolutely. And let's piggyback on that real quick. And let's talk about your number one booked it moment. Walk us through that day, the (laughs) auditions and callbacks, if they happen to be a part of it. What was going on in your life? And what about that moment makes it your favorite booked it moment? I feel like I've had a few booked at moments that I'm so grateful for, but the first thing that popped into my mind, maybe because it was a recent job that I did, was dancing on the Jimmy Kimmel show. So I didn't actually audition for that gig, which uh, was a blessing. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> yeah. yeah, auditions can be rough. Uh, I was lucky enough to just uh, direct book it which was awesome yeah so for that job I was dancing for a band called Saint Motel and they'd been on the Jimmy Kimmel show before but hadn't used dancers and this time around they were using dancers that was a really awesome gig an awesome time we had rehearsals with the band and then the day that we shot it was like a full day call and it was just such a cool experience to be on set and working for TV. So we had some blocking and some dress rehearsals earlier in the day, like camera blocking and things like that. And then, yeah, we got to hang out in our own trailer and have hair and makeup done and get ready for the show. And it was just such a buzz. And that day, I remember thinking to myself, I'm so lucky to be here. This is awesome. I wish I could do this just day in, day out. Yeah, I love that. And yeah, what was the experience like once you did the actual performance? Did you remember it? Were you, did you have a moment to relish in it for, a, for any length of time? Uh, I feel like I have these moments on stage all the time where I get off stage and it must be the adrenaline, but I'm always like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, did, that just went so fast. I went into a, this like awesome bubble for those few minutes or whatever and came out the other side but the awesome thing about doing a job on tv is that it's recorded so you can watch it back and go oh yeah (laughs) that's me like that's that's what was happening and you can relive it all over again yeah i love that yeah (laughs) amazing well let's take a moment to talk about the present what projects are you working on now what are you looking forward to and We talked about it a little bit, and it's a weird time. We've got this global pandemic going on. How do you see the entertainment industry moving forward in the next couple of years? I'm trying to be, you know, as positive as I can about the entertainment industry and really hoping that things can be back up and running as soon as possible. But personally for myself, things have been pretty quiet here in Adelaide but I was lucky enough to be back on set last week actually I shot a commercial for Spendless Shoes so that was really cool 
being able to be back on set and back dancing in front of a camera and back working with a crew. So I really enjoyed that last week. And then I also did a bit of judging for a dance competition called Get the Beat last week as well. So that was really awesome and, yeah, felt really good to be working back in the dance world again. Apart from that, the projects that I've been working on have been mainly to do with this new business that I've started called The Right Creative. Yeah. So at the moment I'm still building content for the website we shot a like a hip hop concept video a few weeks ago and I'm actually editing it myself which is a new skill that I'm learning so I've been working on that getting some costuming together and we're currently in the process of building Adelaide's first champagne skirt so that's exciting so I've been working on that and uh, yeah hopefully it'll be ready soon and the audiences of Adelaide will be able to see it and enjoy it at their functions and parties. Yeah, beautiful. And let's move on to one of my favorite sections in the interview. I call it the Grease Lightning Round. Woohoo! <laughs> I am going to ask you a handful of questions. I want you to answer them as quickly and concisely as possible, one after another. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, first question. What was the one thing holding you back from committing to a career as an entertainer? Ooh, one thing holding me back. This wasn't always, I don't really remember feeling like this too much. Like I'm thinking back to my early years. But when I did leave high school, I went to uni straight away and started studying a communications degree because I thought it was the smart thing to do. Right. So I think that was holding me back initially. I thought, oh, is a dance career like the smartest option and like stable and financial and all those adult like things. But um, that only lasted six months. And then I decided, no, I need to dance. So I quit that course and then I transferred into my BA of dance performance. Yeah, great. And the second question, what is the best piece of advice you have ever received? Ooh, so recently I received some advice from this woman called Katie Warner Johnson, and she actually runs a company called Carbon 38, which I'm an ambassador for. And she said to be shameless, which I really loved and really connected with. And it's so simple, but I think I relate to this mostly with starting this new business, just having the guts to go and get what I want. Just be shameless about it. Take the risk. Yeah, absolutely. And the third question, what is something that is working for you right now? Or if you'd like to go pre-COVID, what was working for you before our industry went on pause? I think something that is working for me now and had started to work for me pre-COVID as well was a bit of a shift into only doing jobs and working with people that are positive experiences. I really made that decision to not take on work just because I, I, I needed it if it, if it wasn't going to be a positive experience. But yeah, just making that decision to let go when a certain job or person isn't aligning with me and, and not feeling guilty about it. Because I feel like how you feel is worth more than an awesome gig or a fancy gig that you book. Yeah, that's something that has really worked for me lately, just shifting that mindset and going with what feels right and feels good rather than just going after any old gig type thing. Absolutely. I can 100% relate to that because it's easy to get caught up in the grind and be like, yes, 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 yes. I want to do this and that and the other thing. And then there's the, the whole idea that you can burn yourself out doing that. But then also there does come a point where you're like, look, I'm busy. I'm making great money. I'm doing stuff in the industry, but there's a lot of this stuff that I can't really be bothered doing because it's not really fulfilling me in a way. And I also had that epiphany a handful of years ago that was like, you know what, I'm going to just do stuff that I want to do that I feel inspired to do. And what I found at least is that more of that work started coming my way because I was freeing up some of my time because I was turning down the things that I wasn't as passionate about. I knew that weren't going to be positive experiences necessarily. Sure, they they put money in your bank account, but 
the experience itself was not something that was really all that thrilling. And as soon as I started cutting more of that out of my life, I found that it got replaced with that positive stuff. Definitely. Yeah. I think it's such a smart move. You make room for what truly aligns with you. So you have to be picky sometimes, even though we're all fighting for work in this industry. I feel like it does pay off to to have that mindset and be picky with what is going to feel good for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the fourth question, what is your best resource, whether that is a book, a movie, a YouTube video, a podcast, maybe a piece of technology that you have found is helping your career right now? I think that social media is a really powerful resource these days and it can really help you book jobs, connect with people, network. It's almost like another version of your resume or your showreel online, which is so easily accessible to people from all over the world. So, yeah, I'd say that's a resource that I really focus on Um, And I am focusing on at the moment and driving energy into because I just feel like it's it's the easiest way these days to quickly tell people what you're doing and what you're about. And yeah, and I've I just I think people are booking more and more jobs just from their Instagram uh, these days. So it really pays to keep your social media up to date and fresh and and looking good and reflecting you because you never know who's looking, who's watching and who might want to book you or use you for a job or connect with you in in different ways. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you brought that up as well, because I really truly believe, and I've thought this for a long time now, that your Instagram, for instance, is your running resume. And you are in the LA market. So they're very much deep into Instagram being a really serious marketing tool. But other markets in the world are behind that. And the fact is, it's going to catch up and it's going to be there. So you best get on top of it as quickly as possible if you're not already. Regardless if you think it's silly that people put so much stock in your social media following and what your social media looks like, the fact is, producers and casting directors are asking for it. They want it because they want to leverage your audience for their company, for their gig, whatever it might be, so they can get free marketing. And that's really what it boils down to. And yeah. if they can get more free marketing from someone because they have a more established following, they're usually going to take that person over someone who has no social media following. Yeah, definitely. Which, yeah, I guess there's positives and negatives to it as well because sometimes people with more followers might book the job than you, which is sucky. But I've also had people contact me needing dancers and who I recommend and they've said, oh, can you send me their Instagram? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, yeah, sure. And actually I did a little bit of a an Instagram tweak the other week right before I booked that commercial for Spendless Shoes. I thought I know that they'll probably look at my Instagram. So I made sure that I uploaded a video of me dancing that was like quite recent and then put some things on my story ready for them to see. Cause I thought I have a feeling they'll go and look at it. So I need to show them, like put my best foot forward here and show them just in case that influences their decision on booking me. For and sure. it worked. There you go. <laughs> so you I booked go. the job. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the fifth question, if you had to start your career from scratch, but you still had all the knowledge and experience you've collected from your career in this industry, what would you do or not do? Would you do anything differently or would you keep it the same? Oh, I think I would pretty much keep it the same, (laughs) but I would definitely not stress over some certain things that I definitely stressed about in my early years that really (laughs) didn't matter in the end. Things like how flexible my feet were or how good my point was and things like that where I whereas I feel as a younger dancer you really just you stress out about things like that or you worry about you know certain things of your body yeah how flexible your feet are and then if you are going into the commercial dance world that's really not going to matter at the end of the day. <laughs> nope. So, yeah, there's definitely things I look back on and I go, wow, yeah, 
that that didn't ever affect me in my career. I should never have stressed about that. Yeah, absolutely. I think we all have a handful of those things that we could have just forgot about and left to the side and we better be better for yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And the last question, what is the golden nugget knowledge drop you've learned from your successful career in the industry you'd like to leave with everyone? This might sound a little bit cliche, <laughs> but it's something I feel like I managed quite well throughout my career, which I'm quite proud of, um, is just staying true to you. I, I always used to say, I don't care if it takes me longer to get where I want as long as I did it the right way. I'd say don't compromise yourself to book the gig. Take your time and build your career in a way that you can be proud of because the industry can be cutthroat and sometimes it really is all about being friends with the right people. But you want to be creating art that you're feeling good about and that's feeling true to you, not some mask you've had to put on just to add to your resume. Yeah, that's definitely a, uh, a golden nugget that I'll leave you with. But also, I just looking back on the auditions that I've been to over the years, I, I'd say don't feel uncomfortable or if you feel uncomfortable in an audition, feel free to leave <laughs> which is probably like a bit of a strange piece of advice because people wouldn't usually say this but especially in LA where there's so many different types of dancing and different styles of dance that fall under different umbrellas and I know there were times where I stayed at auditions knowing full well I wouldn't be proud of myself doing that movement on stage yeah. um and I stayed anyway. And looking back, I'm, oh, I should have gone and got a coffee instead of being at that audition. <laughs> but yeah, I think we're like, we're taught to stay and keep quiet and not stand up to those providing opportunities for us. But this kind of relates back to staying true to who you are, no matter what the outcome. If like you're at an audition and you know full well that you don't want to be doing that movement on stage or wearing that costume or et cetera, et cetera, which there is a lot of that kind of in LA that like really pushes boundaries. I would say stay true to you in that area as well. And if you feel uncomfortable, then just leave. Yeah, I think that's incredible advice. Incredible. And to wrap up this interview, Jenna, it is time to give yourself a plug. Where can we find Ooh. you? How do our listeners connect with you? Is there anything you want to promote? Wow, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram tag is at Jenna Wallacek. And then my business tag is at The Right Creative. And that's on Instagram as well. <laughs> Perfect. And for everyone listening out there, I have put the links to both of those in the description of this episode so you can easily connect with Jenna. Jenna, it has been so wonderful to have you on. Thank you so much for sharing your journey and being here today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us today. My one call to action for you is to go to youbookedpodcast.com and join our free email community where we dig deep into a continually growing resource of truly actionable things you can be doing right now to help advance your entertainment career. Don't miss an episode. We have a new guest seven days a week. Search for You Booked It on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app and subscribe today. All the best to you. We'll see you tomorrow.